طيب سو بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار I commence in the name of Allah, the most glorious, the most sublime, the most gracious, the most merciful. I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speeches, the book of Allah jalla wa ala, the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Salawatullahi Wasalamuhu Ali. And the worst of affairs are newly invented matters, as every newly invented matter is something that leads humanity astray. And we ask Allah to always keep us on Sirat al Mustaqim, the straight path. Ameen. So we are going through today the minor resurrection, inshaAllah ta'ala. And we have been dealing with those signs of the hour that have occurred that will continue to occur or that are reoccurring or that may have occurred once and they never come back again or that they may have occurred once and they come back again inshallah ta'ala and we left off last week talking about how do we save ourselves from these types of tribulations that are occurring and happening and we are seeing with our very own eyes and we took the hadith of that was uh, uh, narrated by Hudayfa ibn Yaman, right, who was recognized as one, of, as one of the foremost, right? And he says, I am the most knowledgeable of the people about every tribulation, right? So he is the one of, one of the foremost in knowledge regarding this topic, right, this theme. And he says, I am the most knowledgeable of the people about every tribulation that will come to pass between me and the hour. Okay, so he says, the people used to ask the Messenger of Allah Salawatullahi Wasallamuhu Ali about the good things. But I used to ask him about the bad things for fear that they may catch up with me. I said, O Messenger of Allah, we were in Jahiliyyah, in the times of ignorance and evil. Then Allah brought this good Islam to us. Will there be any evil after this good? And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, yes. I said to him, and after that evil, will there be any good? And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, yes, but it will be tainted with dakhan, a little bit of evil. I said, what will its dakhan be? He said, there will be people who guide others with something other than my guidance you will approve of some of their actions and disapprove of others i said will there be any evil after this good and he says yes there will be callers at the gates of hell and whoever responds to the call will be thrown into it i said oh messenger of allah can you describe them to us he said they will be of us and they will speak our language, subhanAllah. I said, what do you command if I should happen to come upon them in my lifetime? So you see, he's asked, what should I do if I come upon them during my lifetime while I am still alive? And he, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, said what we learned yesterday, right? In the world of the devils and the jinn, one of the ways to keep the devils and the jinn away the Prophet ﷺ said, adhere and hold on to the jama'ah of the Muslims, the community of the Muslims, and their imam, the leader. I said, what if there is no jama'ah? What if there is no community and no imam? He said, then keep away from all of those groups, even if you have to bite onto the root of a tree until death catches up with you while you are still in that state. Subhanallah. Meaning no matter what happens, you hold on to the Qur'an and the Sunnah and you don't let it go. Subhana Rabbil Azim. 
Urbad ibn Sariya, he said, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he preached and gave us a far-reaching sermon lesson to which our eyes filled with tears and it made our hearts tremble. We said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is this lesson a farewell lesson? Are you bidding us farewell? So what do you advise us? He says, I have left you on a clear and bright path whose day or whose night is as its day. No one will deviate after it or no one will deviate from it after I am gone, except that they will be doomed. Whoever amongst you lives after me will see a great deal of division, subhanAllah. I urge you to hold on to my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiyin. Hold on to the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs. Cling stubbornly to it and I urge you to obey the authority even if the ruler is an Abyssinian slave. For the believer is like an easy going camel, whichever, whichever way it goes, it is led. Right? Subhanallah. So we see here that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is clarifying for us the importance of holding on to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Holding on to those beautiful ahadith, those beautiful statements, those beautiful actions, and holding on to the Sunnah of the Khulafa who came after him, right? The four Khulafa who came after him, because MashaAllah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, they held on to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he is telling us that his night is as clear as his day, meaning it is illuminated, right? This path of being on the Quran and sunnah is illuminated. But it takes people to learn, to study, to focus insha'Allah Ta'ala, so that you can be able to see the clarity in that path. And then he goes on to tell us that part of the signs is that you're going to see a lot of wars, right? That are going to take place. So he asks the question, how should Muslims deal with war that is happening among Muslims, right? SubhanAllah, not wars that are happening among Muslims with non-Muslims, among Muslims. How do we deal with this? So the author, he goes on to tell us, the messenger taught his ummah how they should deal with tribulations of this kind which arise among Muslims where matters are confused. And it is not clear who's in the right and who's in the wrong. The messenger of Allah وسلم, advocated avoiding conflict and fighting in such situations and retreating to a remote place where a man could tend his sheep on top of mountains and str or strive against the enemy on the borders of the Islamic State. Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu is not Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr some is a different companion. Radiyallahu anhu narrated to us that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there will be tribu tribulations. Then there will come a tribulation in which the one who is sitting is better than the one who is standing. And the one who is sitting will be better than the one who is walking. And the one who is walking will be better than the one who is striving. When that happens, let the one who has camels go take care of his camels. And let the one who has sheep go take care of their sheep. And whoever has land, then let him go and take care of his land. A man said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what do you think about the one who has neither camel nor sheep, nor any land? He said, let him go to his sword and make it blunt, meaning don't keep it sharp so that when you have to use it or strike, it doesn't hurt or harm anyone. And then let him escape if he can. Oh Allah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I have conveyed the message. Oh Allah, I have conveyed the message. Oh Allah, I have conveyed the message. Then a man said, Oh Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what do you think if I am forced to join one of the two sides? or one of the two groups. He said, then he will carry, and, and, and he says, and a man comes and strikes me, or comes to strike me with his sword, or comes to kill me with his arrow. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, then he will carry his own sins, and he will carry your sins as well. And he will be from among the people of hell. 
Meaning don't fight your brother back, subhanAllah. Or don't fight the Muslim back, inshaAllah ta'ala. And we know that subhana rabbil adeem, during the life of Earthman radiallahu anhu, there was great trial, there was a great trial that took place, subhanAllah. Where after Earthman was killed, because the people were saying that Earthman was favoring his family and bringing in, you know, bringing in his family for positions of authority and wealth and the likes. And subhanAllah, there was an uprising done against Earthman and they killed him. And subhanAllah Rabbil Azim, there was Ali radiallahu anhu who said, you know, I'm the next in line for the Khalifa. And Muawiyah radiallahu anhu was saying, no, we're not going to deal with that right now. We need to deal with the killer of Uthman. And after we deal with the killer of Uthman, we can deal with the whole issue of Khilafa or Khalifa. And it caused a big rift among the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where companions fought against companions. There was the battle of Safin, the battle of the Jamil, subhanahu rabbil azim. Even Aisha radiallahu anha mounted her camel and headed towards battle and subhan rabbil azim there are beautiful stories that take us back to what we are taking right here in the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the companions subhan rabbil azim that they implemented these very things those major companions they implemented these major things not to be involved in the battle at all whatsoever and subhanallah one of them they came to get him for war and he told his daughter, go get my sword. And she brought him a sword that was wood, subhanAllah. And he, they said, what am I going to do with you or your sword, right? Subhanallah Rabbil Azim. But he brought this showing, I'm not going to fight, right? I'm not going to harm another Muslim, subhanAllah. And the companions, as they were involved in these situations to show how ilm, how knowledge was so important. They were remembering the statements of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was causing them to make critical decisions on the spot, which helped them to, mashallah, stay on the right track. Allahu Akbar, right? And this is what we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for. That as we're seeing these different signs that come up, inshallah ta'ala, from those signs that Allah has told us and the Messenger have told us that are present on the earth right now, that are part of the minor signs, and then we have those that are going to come from the major, that it allows us to remember the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ayah in the Quran, that makes us recall these moments that have been mentioned for us to stay on the sirat al mustaqim and know these are the trials and the tribulations that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala have told us about, right? But again, that comes from reading, understanding, studying, learning, and the likes. And At-Tabari, he talks about the root of, of the word fitna or trial to be a test, right? And he says that this denouncing of evil is obligatory for us, okay? That it is obligatory for us to denounce evil Upon the one who is able to do so And he says And whoever supports the one who is in the right Then they have done the right thing And whoever supports the one who is in the wrong Then they have erred And here is where it's important His final statement He says And if the matter is not clear Then his situation Or this is the situation In which the command To fight or to engage Does not apply Right If the matter is gray Unclear then you steer away from that situation, inshallah ta'ala, and you don't get involved, right? And this can be in any situation, not only fighting, right? Uh, you know, fighting in wars or fighting in battles, but it can be in debates, in argumentation, people having serious issues with one another, inshallah ta'ala, and dragging you in. And if, see, if it seems to be unclear to you, you, mashallah, you stay away, inshallah ta'ala, and you don't engage because you don't want to be on the side of wrong, inshallah ta'ala. And you don't want to make the mistake and be on the side of wrong, right? Unless it's absolutely crystal clear that you're going to be on the side of right. And he says, undoubtedly, it is very difficult to find who is right in such cases, right? And this is something that we have to come to the reality of. Why? Because as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he says, magic, speech can be like magic. And when they were going to, you know, uh, 
uh, judge between two people. He says, you know, remember, fear Allah, right? Because you can, Allah, use the most beautiful of speech and convince me of something that's not right or not true. And maybe the other person doesn't have that beautiful kalam, that beautiful speech, that beautiful way to, mashallah, express themselves. And perhaps maybe they don't convince me, but because you're using speech that's like magic, right? You end up convincing me. So fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's true and what's not, right? Subhanallah. And he says, it is very difficult to find out who is right in such cases where there are tribulations and people who are following their whims and desires. Meaning, they're going to try to get you to take their side no matter what. Okay? The safest course, he says, is to keep away and to withdraw. So that the Muslim does not shed the blood that is forbidden for him to shed. And it does not harm another Muslim. And he says, Allah knows best. And the Prophet ﷺ said that when two Muslims come together... With this sword, be safehima, falqatilu wal maktul fi nar. And the companion says, you know, we know the affair of the qatil. Wa ma baalu al maktul. He says, the one when two Muslims come together with their swords drawn out, that the killer and the one who's killed, they both go to the fire. And the companions they said, yeah, Rasulullah, we know the affair of the one who killed, obviously. But what about the one who was killed? Why does he go to the fire? He says. Because إِنَّهُ حَرِيسٌ عَلَىٰ قَتْلِ أَخِي Because he was diligent and really sincere in killing his brother as well. Right? He, he, he had that urge as well. Subhana Rabbil Afi. Right? Allahu Akbar. So we need to be careful inshaAllah Ta'ala. And we don't want to harm our brother or our sister in any situation. They had asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. Or the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَنْ نَجَّهُ Who are the successful ones, right? And he says, "Man salim al Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadihi." Right? The successful ones are those who the other Muslim is safe from their tongue and from their hand. Meaning, I am safe from you verbally abusing me, backbiting me, slandering me, the whole nine yards, and I'm safe from you physically abusing me with your hands or anything else for that matter, right? SubhanAllah. These are the ones who have succeeded. Allahu Akbar, right? And then he goes on to say another sign of the minor, the one, another minor sign of the hour is the appointment of unqualified people to positions of authority. And he says, the Messenger of Allah told us that among the signs of the hour would be the appointed of non-deserving people to positions of authority and leadership. And Bukhari narrated that Abu Hurairah who said, while the Messenger of Allah was sitting in a gathering, speaking to people, a Bedouin came along and said, when will the hour come? The Messenger of Allah continued to speak and some people thought that he, has heard, he had not heard what he said or that he had heard what he said and he did not like what he had said. Others thought that he didn't hear him. So then, when he had finished speaking, he says, where is the questioner, the one who was asking about the hour? The man said, here I am, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, when trust and honesty, when trust and honesty are lost, watch for the hour. He says, how will it be lost? He says, when unqualified people are appointed to the position of leadership and authority, watch for the hour, right? Subhana Rabbil Afi. And this is one of those things that can be go ongoing, subhanAllah, throughout time. And we see it happening in our very life, in this moment and in this era, in this time, subhanAllah Rabbil Afi. Mu'awiyah radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah said, said, there will be imams, leaders after me who will speak and no one will refute them. They will rush into the fire like monkeys. Subhanallah. This has been narrated by At-Tabarani and Al-Kabir Al-Awsat. And also by Abu Ya'la. And then he says, Some of these rulers will be distracted by the desires and pleasures from taking care of the Muslim affairs. Some of them will not know the truth. 
So they will force people to do things with which they are not familiar. Right? And thus spreading bid'ah, innovation, and evil among them. This is described in the narration by Ubadah ibn Samit radiallahu anhu from the Messenger of Allah. He says that there will be rulers who will be distracted by things. They will delay the prayer from its proper time. So make your prayer with them voluntary. Subhanallah. Right? Meaning, pray with them so that you don't find yourself in issues. But make it voluntary, inshallah ta'ala. Meaning, you have already prayed your salat, your fard salat at its proper time, inshallah ta'ala. Right? So we see here, subhanallah, that this issue, right? And the Prophet ﷺ has told us in other ahadith, subhanallah, that... This part of the signs of the hour will be with the death of the scholars, right? That unqualified people will take the mimbar or they will take these positions and that they will begin to give verdicts, fatawa, and they will misguide people and they will misguide themselves as well, right? Subhanahu Rabbi Adim, showing us the importance of knowledge, right? And, and, and the sanctity of knowledge, subhanAllah, that it just isn't given to anybody or anyone. And that as leaders in the community, inshallah ta'ala, it is our responsibility that if someone comes and shows up and claims to be someone whom they are not, then that we stand up to correct them, to call against that evil, to call to the good, and to bring them back to Qur'an and Sunnah and to make sure that the Qur'an and Sunnah is always out front, insha'Allah ta'ala. It is also found in the Musnad of Ahmed and the Mu'jam of At-Tabarani and the Sunan of Ibn Majah from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, you will have rulers who will delay the prayer from his time and introduce innovations. And Ibn Mas'ud, he asked, what should I do in such a circumstance, Ya Rasulullah? And he وسلم, said, Are you asking me, O oh, Ibn Um Abd? So now you get to see, all right, Ibn Mas'ud was known as O oh, Ibn Um Abd. What you should do? And he says, There is no obedience to the one who disobeys Allah. Right? This is a principle in Islam. There is no, this, no obedience to the one who who disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Sunnah al-Nasai and Musnad of Ibn Hibban, they recorded a hadith with the Sahih Isnad uh, from ar Fajr that he said, after I'm gone, I will see things that are not sound. Whoever you see departing from the jama'ah, the group, or wanting to create the vision in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, no matter who he is, Kill him for the land of Allah is with the jama'ah. The hand of Allah is with the jama'ah. And the shaitan is running with the one who departs from the jama'ah. And of course here, you always have to make the point insha'Allah ta'ala that this hadith also in our times, we should be careful in taking this hadith, right? And implementing this hadith according to the statement of Nabiullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because perhaps maybe your understanding to harm someone else because they are departing from the jama'ah or creating the vision may not be appropriate, inshallah ta'ala. These things are always left to, mashallah, the scholars of this ummah, okay? They are left to the scholars of the ummah and not left to the, mashallah, generality of the people, right? Subhanallah. We don't leave these verdicts to be done or to be decided upon by those people who are the general populace of the ummah because they don't have the knowledge to be able to do so inshallah ta'ala so you always take those things back fas'alu ahli dhikri in kuntum la ta'lamun ask the people of knowledge if indeed you don't know and then the prophet sallam he told us that this corruption of muslims is going to be something that is gradual subhanallah right it will be happen right gradually the amana the trust all of these things are going to be lost in a gradual manner, unfortunately. He says another sign of the hour is when the slave woman will give birth to her master. Right? As when that famous hadith, the hadith Jibril, when he came and he asked him about the hour, and he says, the one who was being questioned does not know any more than the one who was questioning. And then he says, tell me some of its signs. 
And the Prophet ﷺ said, when the slave woman gives birth to her mistress, and when you see the barefoot naked shepherds competing in building lofty structures, right? And he was asked, O Messenger of Allah, who are the keepers of the sheep and the barefoot, hungry, and dependent? And he says, they are the Arabs. Ibn Rajab, he says in his commentary regarding this hadith, what is implied by the sign of the hour mentioned in this hadith is that control of affairs will be given to those who are not qualified for that, okay? So control of affairs will be given to those who are not qualified for that. As the Prophet ﷺ said, the one who asked him about, uh, said to the one who asked him about the hour, when control of the affairs is entrusted to those who are not qualified for that, then look for the hour, okay? When the barefoot naked shepherds who are ignorant and rough people become the leaders of people and so wealthy that they compete with one another in building lofty structures, this leads to corruption in both religious and worldly affairs. And unfortunately, we are now living and seeing this ahadith being implemented and played out right before our very eyes. Right, Those Arabs who used to be desert Bedouins and now because of oil, now because of subhanAllah renewable energy and all of these other things, they have become from among the wealthiest of the wealthy in the world. They are competing and building the loftiest and the highest of buildings and towers that they spin, that they do all types of things, subhanAllah Rabbil Azim, bringing forth, right, subhanAllah, this very hadith to life. And in many instances, it is also corrupting religious beliefs as we now see that subhanahu rabbil azim um, they've brought in rappers and singers and all types of people subhanallah into saudi arabia to begin all of a sudden assimilating with the culture of the world around them may allah tabaraka wa ta'ala help us They've had the biggest rave party, I think, in the world, out in the middle of the desert. They've celebrated Halloween and all other types of stuff. And all of this is signs of the hour to show us that Nabiullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a sadiqul mastuq. That he was the most truthful. Al-Ameen. Right? That what he brought from Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is coming to pass, subhanAllah. And I don't understand how these individuals who see this happening or they are part of the ones who are making it happen right in front of their very own eyes, that how they don't understand how they're bringing, subhanAllah, the signs of the hour into play. May Allah protect us. And then he says that the phrase, when the slave woman gives birth to her mistress, this refers to the one who is in control of her and owns her, right? Because... The slave woman who gives birth to her mistress, meaning the she's the child of the slave master, she becomes the owner of her mother, right? SubhanAllah, one of the understandings. She becomes the owner of her mother, as the sheikh he explained, or what not to say, as one of the explan explanations are, that she will inherit, or he will inherit, or she will inherit her father's, right? Uh, land and property or whatever it is whether willingly or unwillingly because she is in that line and then she becomes the master over her mother and there are other um, explanations to this portion of the hadith as well he says the next is that the nations will call one another to attack the Muslims and subhanallah we are living again in those very times he says, among the signs of the hour will be the savage attacks of the Kafir nations against this Ummah. According to the hadith narrated from Thawban, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu says, soon the nations will call one another to attack you, right? As dinners, as diners call one another to the platter. Someone asked the Prophet, will that be because we will be few and little or small group in those days? He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no. Those days, in those days, you will be many, but you will be like the foam, like the foam of the sea, the scum, that, that, that white foam that you usually see on the beach, subhanAllah, you're going to be like that. Allah will remove fear and respect from the hearts of your enemies, and he will fill your hearts with wahin, wahin, 
weakness. And he says, or they ask, what is wahn, ya Rasulullah? He says, wahn is love of this world and hatred of death. Subhanallah. And he says that this has happened more than once in history. This is that recurring sign, right? Subhanallah. He says, once it was when the crusader nations called one another to attack this ummah. Again, when the Tatars conquered the Islamic world. He said, but this prophecy has been fulfilled in the last century in a clearer way when the crusaders, the Jews, and the atheists agreed to destroy the Islamic Khilafah. Then they carved up the Muslim lands which had been ruled by the Khalifa and shared them out among themselves, giving control of Palestine to the Jews. He says, the Muslims became more lost than orphans at the feast of mean people, subhanahu rabbil adhim. Up until the present day, the forces of evil and cooperate, are cooperating with one another to destroy this ummah, its resources and stealing its wealth and humiliating its men. Right, subhanAllah. And we see that happening everywhere in the world, subhanAllah. Right, that we have become the food on the dinner plate. Right, subhanAllah rabbil adhim. That the Muslims are being stumped everywhere you look. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala help us and give victory to all of the Muslims who are suffering around the world. But the signs must come to pass. He then goes on to say that the reason for this cooperation, he says, Thawban said the Messenger of Allah, says, I asked my Lord to not allow overwhelming famine to destroy the entire ummah and not to allow any enemy from outside to wipe them out. My Lord said, Oh Muhammad, if I have decreed something, it could never be changed. But I have granted you that overwhelming famine should never destroy your entire ummah. Even if all surrounding nations were to come together and that an enemy should never wipe you out from the outside, even if all surrounding nations would come together to destroy them, they will not be able to do so. He says, but some of this ummah, subhanAllah, but some of this ummah will destroy one another and they will take one another prisoner. And subhanAllah rabbil azim, what the Prophet Sallallahu is saying in his hadith that can be found in Muslim, he is saying that it is because of us that we are reaching the state of being stepped upon. We will take each other prisoners. We will harm one another, subhanAllah. Because Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala promised that he would never let the people from the outside be the ones who harm us and do away with us. Look at a lot of the wars that are taking place right now. Saudi Arabia and Yemen, right? SubhanAllah, the war in Syria, right? A lot of this stuff is, SubhanAllah, supposedly Muslim upon Muslim. Allahu Akbar. It's not the outsiders coming in, SubhanAllah, and doing the fighting. Allahu Akbar. May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala protect us in the Ummah. Ameen. Another sign, he says, are landslides, stones from heaven, um, and different means by which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala punishes the people. He says that Aisha radiallahu anha narrated in a hadith that can be found in a Tirmidhi. Among this ummah there will be landslides, transformation into animals and stones from heaven. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, will we be destroyed even though there are righteous men among us? Will Allah destroy us even though there are righteous men among us? And the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, if evil is prevalent. SubhanAllah. A similar hadith is also narrated from Imran, which is close to the hadith of Aisha, except that he said, a man from among my, uh, my, the, the Muslims said, O Messenger of Allah, when will that be? And he said, when female singers, when female singers and musical instruments become widespread, and much wine is drunk. And this hadith is also narrated in a tirmidhi subhanAllah. A sign of the hour, female singers becoming widespread in instruments and much wine being drunk, subhanAllah. And we know that we are also living in those very times now. Another sign is that there will be an abundance of wealth, right, subhanAllah. And 
Awf ibn Malik, he said during the campaign of Khaybar, he says, count six things before the hour. And he listed these things one by one. And one of the things that were mentioned was that wealth will be abundant, such that a man will be given a hundred dinar and will remain discontent. Right? SubhanAllah. And in Muslim, it is narrated from Abu Hurairah عنه, that the Prophet ﷺ said that I will not begin until wealth, wealth increases among you and it becomes abundant such that a wealthy man will be concerned about whether anyone will accept charity from him. And a man will be invited to take his money and he will say, I do not need it. He says the meaning of the phrase, a wealthy man will be concerned, is meaning he will be upset because he will not find anyone whom he can give charity to. Subhanallah, right? Because the people are not going to be in need of that wealth. He says another sign of the hour which we see taking place presently is that the salams are only given to people you know. Subhanallah. He says from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh, that the Messenger of Allah said just before the hour there will be exclusive greetings, right? And by exclusive, meaning they only give salams to the ones they know. And widespread trade, such that a woman will help her husband in business, severance of family ties will take place, false testimony will be present, concealment, hiding the truth, right, or hiding truthful testimony, and the emergence of the pen. And this hadith can be found in the silsila til hadith and it is sahih, inshallah. The next minor sign is that he says the standards by which people are measured will be distorted. The Messenger of Allah has told us that the standards by which people are measured will be distorted before the hour comes. A word of a liar will be accepted as truth. A word of a liar will be accepted as truth and believed, while the word of an honest man will be rejected. Wealth and honor will be entrusted to those who are treacherous while the honest and the trustworthy will be accused of betrayal and treachery, subhanAllah. Insignificant men will speak on matters which concern all people, but they will not offer anything but foolish opinions. And they will guide or they will only guide people in the most twisted of manners. May Allah protect us from this. He also says another sign is when oppression and injustice would increase at the end of times, right? Oppression and injustice, right? And we see that right now, subhanAllah. We see, right, the increasing and the elevating of oppression and injustice all over the world, right? SubhanAllah. Black Lives Matter was a form of injustice and oppression that we've seen and it continues to remain at the forefront, correct? SubhanAllah. He says, men appointed to maintain security and deter wrongdoing <laughs> will themselves be spreading corruption. They themselves will become oppressors, whipping the backs of people. And this is very common in the Muslim world today, right? And the Shaykh, he refers these people to be police officers and these type of people who have been corrupt, subhanAllah, and have the ability to do that to other people, subhanAllah, Rabbil Adim. And I can tell you, <laughs> As he mentioned, you see this in the Muslim world today. Five, six years ago, I was in Egypt, subhanAllah, for a month for a leadership course, a 30-day leadership course among Latino Muslims. And subhanAllah, Rabbil Adin, we happened to be there the day the Suez Canal opened up. And they told us, don't go out. It's a dangerous day to go out. You know, don't go out. There's going to be a lot of people in the street or whatever have you. We got bored in the hotel and said, we said, let's go out and get something to eat, you know, not too far from the hotel. And we came to this place where, mashallah, there's this roundabout, right? And there's no lights, but there's a street this way, there's a street this way, there's a street this way. There's, there's like about four or five streets all coming into this roundabout. And there's no stoplights at all. And you see the cars and they're coming in and stopping and going and, you know, and subhanAllah, no one is getting into an accident, right? So we found it amazing. And one of the brothers that I was with, a Brazilian brother, he was recording the event. And then another person just came up to him and asked him, what are you doing? 
And I remember that they told me you got to watch it in Egypt, right? SubhanAllah, because you have undercover police and they ask you all types of questions or whatever have you. So I told them, I was like, yo, Akhi, just come on. Come, let's go. And, you know, put the camera down. Come, let's go. We start walking away. The man walks over to my side. He says, you know, what are you doing? Where are you from? So I tell him, mind your business. You know, leave me alone. Get away from me. I don't know you. When we get across the street, there was a military officer sitting on the corner, subhanahu rabbi al-adim. The man, all he did was point at us. He pointed at us, and the man, he said something, and four military officers came out of the building, surrounded us. Guns locked and loaded, and they used revolvers with no safeties on them, right? So now you could, in my head, I'm like, oh, you know, relax, calm down. I don't know what's going on here, inshallah ta'ala. We got our hands up, right? We learned this in America. <laughs> Be easy, subhanAllah. And they bring us into this building, which I didn't want to enter because I don't know what's going to happen to us. And subhanAllah, the man asks, you know, he's, he's, he's asking my friend, why were you recording? What were you doing? And, you know, he didn't speak Arabic. So I said, listen, I, I, talk to me. I'm the one. And he's like, no, no, it's not you. It, it was him. I was like, la, la, it's me. Talk to me. Right. So then they bring me over to this cop that he was sitting by himself. And he's like, you know what were you doing? I said, listen, man, we're, we're students. We were taking video pictures of your beautiful country. We're tourists. You know, that's what tourists do. Right. SubhanAllah. And he says, Hada memnur. This is not permissible here. I said, if he belled camel in the entire country, he says, nah, memnur. You can't do it. He says, open up the pictures. So alhamdulillah, we used to download our pictures every night. So I didn't have much from that morning. I opened up the pictures and he says, erase everything. Imsah kullu shay. Khas. Erase everything. Delete. And, you know, he let us go. He says, don't let us catch you doing this again. And subhanAllah, by Allah, after that point, I became so aware that every day, every time we left, we were being followed by a military. Every day, we were being followed by someone from the military. Wallahi, subhanAllah. I was so uncomfortable. I couldn't wait to leave the country because I was like, I don't go through this in America, right? SubhanAllah, it's uncomfortable. You come to the Muslim land, and now I'm being followed by police and military in this form, in this manner, right? And it's not, it's not a good feeling, subhanAllah. Right, so I kind of concur with the Sheikh that you see this going on in the Muslim world and people are being arrested, scholars are being arrested in the Muslim world, subhanAllah, and there's a lot of oppression happening, unfortunately, in trying to shut off the light of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And this happened during the time of the righteous scholars as well, like Imam Ahmed and the likes, subhanAllah, who were beaten and whipped and jailed and imprisoned, you know, subhanAllah Rabbi So they're old tactics that continue to be applied, unfortunately, throughout our time as well. In ending, he gives the hadith where um, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he related that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are two types of people of hell whom I have not seen. Okay, look, there are two types of people of hell. Guys, I want you to listen up. Two types of people of hell who I have not seen. People with the whips like the tails of cattle, which they strike the other people. And he said, and the second are women who are clothed but naked. SubhanAllah. Walking with an enticing gait. Okay. Clothed but naked. Walking with an enticing gait. With their heads looking like the heads of camels. He says, listen up. They will not enter paradise nor even smell its fragrance. Although its fragrance may be detected from such and such a distance. SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar, right? So again, just really taking into consideration these signs, really trying to not be from those who are living out and implementing these signs in our life, right? SubhanAllah, especially things like this, right? For our sisters, inshallah ta'ala, clothed but naked, right? Never smelling the fragrance of paradise, right? SubhanAllah, Rabbil Adi, may Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala protect our sisters and allow them to submit, inshallah ta'ala, and May Allah protect their brothers from being oppressors and taking advantage of others and committing injustices in the earth. Ameen. And may he keep us always on Sirat al-Mustaqeem. With that, beloved brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala, I'll open the floor up if you have any questions, reflections, comments, corrections, inshallah ta'ala, feel free to unmic yourself and or use the chat box, inshallah.